Welcome back. Well, you know, for some people, vintage clothing holds decades worth of sentimental value. Maybe it was that Pink Floyd concert you saw with a friend back in the 70s. Yeah, that's more of my era. <laughs> or the shirt you wore in the early days at the Palace, you know, watching the bad boys dominate the NBA. You remember that John Sally, the Spider-Man yeah, shirt? My era is more of the 90s. Uh, oh, I knew you yeah, were going to okay. go there. But believe it or not, the fashion of yesterday, it's incredibly popular today. So why is that? We've got to bring in someone on inside on this vintage clothing industry is where we're talking about today. The Vintage Vault with Ryan Burke. Ryan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. The vintage has taken off, you know, the last five or ten years. Why get involved and open the Vintage Vault in Clawson? Um, well, to be honest, it's more so a sustainability thing for us. You know, there's, there's already so many t-shirts out there and today's quality isn't the quality from the 90s. You know, back then they were making t-shirts just the way they knew how to, you know. A lot of today's gear is just cheaper quality. You know, you wash it a couple times, stretches out, the graphic cracks, whereas like shirts from the 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, you know, like they've already lasted 20 or so years and they're, they're made to last, so. Tell me about it. I mean, I wash a shirt now once and it's disintegrating. You, you, know like, you got to hang dry everything now. I got those one time wear. Classic that's shirts it. that are still going strong. Now, you got some excellent things. I want to touch on these two shirts in front. Talk Absolutely. about those first off. I see a, a big shark, so obviously Jaws. Oh, yeah. So this shirt was actually released when they made the, uh, the Jaws ride at Universal Studios. It was only available for the day. It's super rare. Um, it's got a big puffy print graphic to it, a big back hit as well. And this shirt right here goes for around $750. Ooh, um, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. quality. And people will pay that, won't they? That's oh, yeah. quality. We've sold a few already. A, um, a concert t-shirt here too. Yes, so we have a Lollapalooza, vintage Lollapalooza t-shirt. Um, just very iconic, you know, still today Lollapalooza is very popular. I actually went in 2016. Pass that so. over here, pass that over here. Come Absolutely. On. I've been to a couple of yeah, Lollapaloozas. Yeah, I was going to ask if we could... Uh, Unfurl these. Let's okay. see. Absolutely. Well, Metallica, Soundgarden, Wu Tang. Oh, this is very, very <laughs> thick. Like it, yeah, nice. yeah, you can definitely tell the difference. Yeah. The so you, so good. you guys are celebrating your one-year anniversary, right? Yep. And talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges when you first opened. I'm sure you had some. Um, to be honest, it was very smooth sailing for us. One of the main challenges. So when we signed our lease, we were only given a month to build out our space, and it was a mess when we moved in. So we had to get, my dad's a carpenter, um, and we had to get him in there. We had to re-drywall everything, put up tiling, uh, molding, trim, hardwood floors, everything. So that was the main challenge, just getting everything completed in a month. But other than that, it's been amazing. We have so many great customers. We have so many great supporters. So we've got the city behind us. You hear from a lot of people, too. I mean, they start in high school. They start early in life collecting vintage what was your story what's your backstory in this so my backstory basically um, I had just moved out to Kalamazoo to go to college um, and I was working for a company I'm not gonna name them but three days in I got fired mm. and it was really hard to find a job out there because all the jobs were taken so I watched this YouTube video on this person that was thrifting clothes and reselling it online for money so I figured hey if they could do it I could do it um, and started doing that and it built up very quickly for me to the point where probably a month later, I would set up clothing racks in my living room and schedule appointments for people to come shop in my living room like a store. Nice. Um, and built that up, and then I started working for this company called StockX. Shout out StockX. Mm -hmm. um, worked with them for the last five years and was still thrifting and reselling clothes, but also learning the ins and outs of authenticating sneakers, streetwear, collectibles, everything, and figured, you know, why not? Why not combine the two? I've got two different skill sets that I think kind of target the same audience. Yeah, yeah. and you mentioned StockX. You got to tell us about these sneakers here. Okay, so these right here are, are the Jordan real? 1. Of course, these are real. <laughs> these are the Jordan 1 Off-White UNC Highs. Um, retail was $180. Resell, they go for around $2,200. Um, and we have the Nike SB Chunky Dunky. Um, these released during COVID and went crazy. It's a collab with Ben and Jerry's and Nike SP. Oh. Size 13. Uh, these go for around $2,500. Wow. Yeah, and I think sometimes people confuse vintage clothing with like thrift clothing. That's Absolutely. not the case. Absolutely. Yeah. No, so a lot of people combine the two. Vintage clothing, so vintage is anything 20 years or older. So, you know, anything up until about 2003 is considered vintage now. So Chris, um, you're really vintage. I'm so. double vintage. Yeah. And then triple. some. Yeah. Well, I'm not triple. Remember <laughs> <laughs> that in there. No mercy here. Uh, <laughs> gonna resist. Yeah. Oh, uh, which is funny. You said this is worth 150 bucks. So I have one a uh, Lollapalooza shirt from like 1993. So three years earlier than this. Unfortunately, I think there's some yellow pit stains yeah. on mine because I haven't been taking care of it. So what would I have to do? Like really wash it and then bring it down to you to get an appraisal? 
Um, you don't even have to wash it. Bring it I down don't even to have the to wash shop. It. This is and then great. do you guys fix things? I mean, do you basically get things ready for sale? Absolutely. So we will stain treat any of the T-shirts. We clean everything. We'll steam it, price it, get it put out on the floor, and we price all of our items accordingly. So. With our shop, we put out around 50 new vintage items every single night. We get around 200 new items every single week. So we price our items very fair, pretty much below market. Um, you can ask some of our supporters. You know, we have customers. We're open six days a week. We have customers that will come in every single day just to see the new items that come out. That's so oh, cool. I believe it. You, you got a, a uh, weekend event as well, right? Yes, sir. So we have our vintage night market coming up. It's August 25th from 5 to 10 p.m. Uh, we handpick 10 vendors to set up there and sell their clothes. Um, Weiss Distillery is also sponsoring the event, so they'll have a bartender outside serving drinks. They'll have a bunch of gourmet and vegan hot dogs. Um, this is our second event so far. It's a killer event, but we're excited for it. Everyone should come check it out. What it's day a free was that? family event. It's Friday, August 25th. I'm yeah. in there. Yeah, right. I'm gonna be there. You got the That's bartender. This oh, yeah. that, that helps us sales and to get the people <laughs> a little loose there oh, after yeah. hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, so really quickly, I don't want to put you on the spot, but what's the neatest thing you've had so far that you've sold? So, the neatest thing I've had so far. Like, just the most unique or something yeah. that's been. So, we, I met this lady when I was out in Pasadena. And during the O.J. Simpson trials, she was pressing T-shirts and selling them outside the courthouse. And I pulled up to her house, and she had three T-shirts left. She only made 20 of them, but they were, like, free O.J. Simpson T-shirts. Mm -hmm. And being that there's only 20 out there, and I had three of them, that was just insanely unique for me and insanely rare, too. How much yeah. did they go for, you remember? So we, we sold all three of them for $1,200 a piece. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. OJ, sure. OJ buy any? Free OJ. OJ did not buy any, <laughs> no, but OJ didn't I can buy any? say uh, we bought them for, she only wanted $10 per t-shirt. I was like, look, I know what I'm going to make on these. So I think I bought all three for $1,500. Wow, they're very, yeah. very, uh, very nice. I don't yeah. know if that's the best business move, but you're very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, still, I still made my money. Yeah, you did. I'm saying. All right. Ryan, thanks a lot for dropping by.